ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. It's all fish and chips, the podcast. Uh, this is episode 33, and my name is Thor, and I'm very excited to be here on this uh, short notice episode for the crew. I ended up changing our record day because of things coming up in the real world, but we are here, and we are excited, and we're going to do a big old podcast. Um, like I said, episode 33, we're getting up there in, in years and, uh, starting to think about maybe quitting the job that we've had for a while and getting a new one, you know, try something different. We're just tired of this, doing the same thing every day. So we'll see what happens. Probably just stick this job out till we retire. Who knows? But to my left, speaking of sticking jobs out till he retires, we've got a Bubby. I'm ready for a thing. A Ding, banging, good time. I, I don't uh, know. He tried to steal mine and then he couldn't manage it. Banging. Dang, dang, nab, banging it. <laughs> Me, I'm personally ready for a gong banging good gong time. Gong banging, okay. And how do you like that apple? Um, next to Bubby, we've got an empty uh, chair again. Uh, Tyler is caught up in the real life shenanigans that is. That's real weird over there. Yeah, I know. That's his. Tyler got a new, different microphone and it's had to have a right angle plug. And it also. Here, let me, let me play this for you. It also does that. Oh, nice. Right? I got to fix that shenanigans. For those of you, if you didn't hear it, it hums like a son of a bitch. Um, so Tyler's out again this week. He is He's trapped in the real world stuff that I'm going to have to be trapped in next week. Um, so we wish him well, hope him the best. Uh, maybe one day he'll get to see his family again. And then next to him, um, we've got scrolling over there on uh, TikTok and Tinder. We've got Amanda. Hi. <laughs> She's got other things going on, but we'll get to her eventually here. Um, so it's Friday for us here this uh, week. The weather has turned chilly. Last time Bubby and I met, we were wearing shorts and T-shirts. And then it was like... So, th- so it was 80 some degrees at the start of this week, right? Bubby? Right. And now we're wearing sweaters and now we're wearing sweaters. But, uh, so between Tuesday and Wednesday is when that cold front came through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my stupid ass didn't close the windows upstairs when I went to bed and it was a nice eight, like 75 degrees. I was like, oh, so nice now. Not really checking ahead on the weather. We woke up and it was 27 degrees. Yeah. It was in your room, in the room. It was cook, 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 cold. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you what you don't want to do is get out of bed at 6.30 in the morning when it is 27 degrees in your room. I bet your floor was cold. Uh, I know. We got to carve it down so it's not too bad. But yeah, wood floors. Yeah. It's not yeah, It's not floors. the best in the cold. But we survived. Uh, it's warming back up. It's going to be nice this weekend again. So we just, it's a roller coaster of things going on here uh, this week. Um, Bubby, you have anything fun going on this week? Did you do anything exciting? Um... Uh, riveting yep. <laughs> you're not I, I always sneak up on you i feel like you do i feel you, like you warn me but he's just here for the I ride and then i try to interact with him and he's surprised every time yeah i am i we're used to you and tyler talking all the time so well tyler's, tyler's going here Tyler's going now tyler, i know we're just tyler's, not used to having to contribute tyler, <laughs> <laughs> tyler is no longer what? with hey, us. conversation i know Weird, there's usually right? like no Podcast? no breaks Oh, the, when the two of you get going. But so. here, here we are, the cursed crew. Kind of yeah. um, so far, we have lived up our, to our name because, the, again, last week, the podcast cut out halfway through, but I have a backup recording device going, so we were saved. I'm curious what will happen this week. We do have the buzzy microphone. But other than that... But why do you have it on? I don't. I just keep pushing it up whenever I mention oh. it. Um, but only Bobby and I can hear it. Amanda uh, has decided she's no longer wearing headphones. There's no point. There's no point in anything. She... She is a nihilist and um, says there is no point. But you know what a nihilist is? Um, I knew. I was thinking you were going to say realist. Real? Well, <laughs> in this day and age, they might be right next to each other. Realist <laughs> and nihilist. Um, so uh, I've got a couple things here. Like I said, w- weather got hot and it's got cool and it's got hot again. So we know what that means. Snakes is coming. The snakes is coming into the basement, Bubby. They're going to sneak up behind you and they're going to crawl right all over you. And in response to that, my wife has gone onto the internet and found an item called snake repellent balls, or as I like to refer to them, snake balls. So she got a big old bag <laughs> of snake balls. Now, this is not the first snake repellent uh, concoction we have purchased for this house. 
Uh, when we first moved in, the first time the snake showed up, she bought a different snake repellent that was a powder that I had to then go around the perimeter of the house and spread the powder all around the perimeter of the house. By the way, are you wearing your bracelet today, Bobby? I am. Okay, good job. Um, Worn it all week. There you go. Um, I have friends <laughs> in low places. <laughs> so, uh, so I had to spread the powder around. It was like a cinnamon. The, apparently, snakes don't like cinnamon. Okay. Sure. So I spread it all around her. And then I said, you know, I spread that all, all that powder around the house. So if there's any snakes in the house, now they can't get out. Now they're trapped in here. So now we have snake balls. Um, I have not got too deep into the experience of what snake balls are. But I am sure this weekend that I will be depositing them in different places where I think the snakes might be to keep the snakes uh, scared away. It's not like a poison. Or, or, or trapped in the house. Or trapped in the house, one of the two. It's not a poison. It's not some sort of... Because we've got a, we've got a, we've got a, a, a term, uh, like a, a pest guy who comes like mm-hmm. four times a year. You got one of those, Bobby? No. No, you don't care? You just let them bugs in? Uh, well, I had a lawn service last two years. And they, yeah. They had a thing they would uh, spray the yard with. Keep the bugs out. Powder or something they'd put on the yard. Cocaine, just... For just, X for... For so much extra money, of course. Right. Yeah. No, they ain't doing that for free. They ain't coming to your house and killing bugs for free, Bobby. You got to pay for that. They're going to put that cocaine powder So down. I paid for it last year, but yeah, okay. I'm not doing that this year. No, nope, screw it. Just let them all in. Just <laughs> beehive. Get a beehive in your house and some termites and some snakes and whatever. So anyway, the orchid guy comes out um, and she's like, can you do anything about the snakes? And he's like, not really. I mean, if you've got one, you can call me and I'll come get it. And she's got a husband for that, so um, she didn't. She didn't need his service. But there's, they're like, there's nothing you can really do to keep the snakes out. But that didn't stop her from buying the snake oil that she saw on the internet. And here we are. So aren't they supposed to be out earlier this year? Yeah, because it's been so warmer mild. Yeah, yeah, it's warm weather. That's it's what okay. happens. Is it gets warm, so they, you know, they first they hatch. Obviously, well, first, they, first when the mommy snake loves a daddy snake. <laughs> right. They do a little thing, and uh, then they make some baby snakes, right? That's right. not how that works with snakes, by the way. I, I don't know. They got eggs, um, and they fertilize eggs, what have you, like chickens. But um, Come on, chicken butt. Chicken butt. Yeah, that's where snakes come from, Bobby. <laughs> Tell Parker that. I want to hear Parker repeat that story. Um, uh, you've done the birds and the bees talk with your kid, right? Uh, let's not go there. Oh, I'm very interested in this. We'll loop back around to this. So uh, once the snakes is hatched uh, and it's warm, they, they're fine. They're outside. They're doing their thing. But then it starts getting cold, you know, because it's spring. So it's warm. Then it's cold. It's warm. It's cold. So when it gets cold, that's when they start coming in the house. And so we had several warm days and now it's cold again. And then it's going to warm back up this weekend. So. Just keep your house really cold. Right? It's cold down here in this basement. It is. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. Um, but... So we should be seeing some snakes pop up here in the near future. So I should have some good snake stories coming up. Hopefully she doesn't see any of them. We just, me and the cat get them ahead of time, but you never know. So Where's that cat? He's, is he behind me? He's probably behind there certain, hunting them snakes. There is a tarp right behind me. Yeah. There's like a banner. He, he jumped out of it last week. Yeah. So he'll, there's a, like a ledge in the basement that's about chest height um, that I just store some stuff on. And then to cover it up for people coming over to do the podcast or whatever, I have an old banner from a show that I did a while back. And um, that's just kind of hanging up in front of that area. It is a huge banner. It's from uh, it's from Big River. That's the Royal Nunsuch. Oh, probably like 40 years ago. 30. Probably uh, 30. 20? It was, it's it, more than 20. It I was think. in Branson. So, 25? Yeah, 20, 25 years ago. 20. It's probably 20. Hmm. I'd guess. I don't really know. My short term my, my short term memory ain't good. My long term memory ain't good. Future memory. Future memory. I can see the future though real good. Um <laughs> so uh but I got that tarp hanging up so it keeps the snake kind of hidden, but then that cat just kind of rummages around back there because he knows they're back there. And he is God's perfect killing machine. That that yellow cat. He's killed rabbits, squirrels, birds. He got a bat once. Snakes, he's real good at snakes. He's God's perfect killing machine. Wow. That thing. He's a he, like I said, he's unpleasant to begin with. I didn't expect the dogs for that. Well, you don't need cat. you don't need snake balls then. You got a cat. I got well. That's surprise. She wants to keep them outside. She wants to deter mm. them from coming in the house mm. because when they come in, he kills it. Then he's very proud that he killed it, and he's going to talk. He's going meow 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 meow, and he's going to take that snake right up into the living room and drop it off well, for everyone to be proud of. Earn his keep. What right? happens if you put it back on the ledge on under your porch? What what, what happens? 
What's that? Like, is it bad for your cat? The snake balls? Around? I have no idea. I don't even know what's in the snake balls. Okay. It could be freaking arsenic and, and freaking, uh, mustard gas for all I know. Uh, she just bought it off the internet. It's, you know, snake oil and scams is what's in there. Probably just spam. Foam balls. <laughs> just foam. You know, them, <laughs> Nothing you know them balls that they put, the, like they stick flowers and stuff yeah. into them crunchy foam. That's all it is. Just, spam soaked in Malort. Right? There you go. Drink for those of you uh, playing along at home. Uh, Bubby said it. Um, so uh, I totally forgot what I was doing here. Oh, I'm looping snake back. Balls. Snake balls. But I'm looping back around. Okay. Bubby. No. Bubby. <laughs> Uh, so, he has asked before uh-huh. about where babies come from and stuff. Right. <clears throat> so, I don't mind having that talk with him at all, but mentally, he is not ready. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, if you, you you explain, you don't have to get, like, deep into details here, Bob. You don't have to get, so, uh, no, I, I mean, you don't I have to rent ha- a video from the, from the back room of the video store or anything. But to explain it to where he will understand, uh, he's not ready. He he can't comprehend or he can't. Um, yeah, he just he's just not ready. This is so this I'm how, giving it another year or so probably. This is how Bubby ends up a grandfather right here. No. Just in case you're playing along at home. No, no girls gross. <laughs> girls gross. Well, he's right about that. But. Uh, um, babies come from the choir loft at church. That's a hundred percent where a lot of babies come from. <laughs> Whoa, is the choir loft at church when ain't nobody looking, Bubby? Oh, that's a that in summer camp. That's where a lot of babies come from. I want to get church camp. camp. Um, so Parker also has, a, you know, cars, Lightning McQueen, uh huh, Tomater, Tomater. So he's uh, until today, Kachow. Had uh, stickers. I don't know where I got them, but on his door uh-huh. of his room, and every day, like it's just getting worse and worse. He goes, uh, "I got stickers. Got, I still got stickers on my door. Still got stickers." And it's just an autism thing where right he it's a, it's, he's stuck has to double check it. Yeah, and I oh, it's been so bad this this last week. I ripped them off the door today. <laughs> what? Threw them what? where he could not find them in, in the bottom of a trash in the garage. Because you like you just like chaos in your house. He uh, it's like ripping a band aid off. I okay. just got to do it. And he came home from school, and of course, first thing he goes yeah. to look for is some stickers. And guess what? Ain't there no more because a papa a papa Bubby here yeah. has done done a thing. So it's nice outside. So I, I distracted him by going, well, you're, you know, it's a really nice day. Go ride your scooter outside and so yeah 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 so he goes rides a scooter outside so he hadn't seen it yet oh he's seen it okay so I he just, knows the stickers are gone. i just distracted him with uh riding a scooter so. okay but he knows the, sco- the the stickers are gone yeah so it does. wasn't as it wasn't as traumatic and he's like oh well i'll go buy them with my own money i was like oh he's gonna get new stickers i was like go right ahead he goes what store <laughs> what store i'm like i don't know <laughs> um palin music disney um, go. Uh, send them to the vape shop. Tell them they got a lot. They got. They probably got stickers there. And they're not gonna let them in though. Casper's. Start Casper's. Casper's. Actually, if you're gonna get them, have them go get stickers. Send them to Spencer's. Just take them to the mall and oh, send them into Spencer's. He's yeah. gonna learn a lot of things there, yeah. Then I'll have to have that talk. Yeah. Just keep him out of the back. You'll be fine. But if he goes <laughs> in the back, you're in trouble. <laughs> All right. So I have just sent you to a photo. Okay, this this will be for the folks at home as well. This is a billboard. Um, Amanda, you go down sixty five to work, so you haven't probably seen this one. This is on the on the way down to uh, Branson. If you're taking going through Ozark and Nixa, and there is a billboard for going a, through Ozark and Nixa. Yeah, th- what is that thirteen or something? Yeah, highway thirteen. I, I 13. go through Ozark. Yeah, but you're on sixty five. You're not going down thirteen. No. So. Um, as you go down uh, Highway 13. Oh, that's not new. That's so old. I know, but it's what has happened to this. So this is a billboard for uh, a restaurant called Flat Creek Steakhouse or Flat Creek something. Um, and they have a billboard with a young gentleman on there eating uh, what appears to be ribs. And he is a ginger uh, young gentleman. Um, that billboard's probably a couple years old. And now, they- I'm going to have to go eat dinner there. Thanks. <laughs> And that billboard has faded over time. And the young gentleman in that billboard has faded more than the rest of the billboard. So it is now just a, 
a redheaded white ghost like vampire child with a, eating what I'm hoping is ribs and not other people. <laughs> let's let's go, go back to where we were talking about albinos. Yeah, about redheaded right? albino. Yes, no, that's exactly what. I'm, but he has all the rib sauce around his mouth. Right, that just looks like blood. Yeah, at this point, looks like the Joker. Yeah, he looks a little bit like the Joker as well. It is. It is not a good advertisement for that restaurant at this point. Yeah. Like back when they b- did that billboard. And around here, people get billboards and they'll pay for them for like a year and then they'll just quit paying for them. But nobody else wants that billboard. So you'll see billboards up for things that have closed 10 years ago, 15 years ago. That is true. There'll be shows in Branson that still got billboards up. Just, and the sign companies won't change them until somebody new but rents right. that space. So that, so that billboard just slowly rots out there in the sun. And I'm guessing that's what's happened to this one. But that vampire child, every time I drive by him, I'm like, oh, that is, a, that is, a, that is the stuff. He's, he, he's kind of, he, it's like the movie It. He kind of has got that It experience going on as well. We'll post this to the Facebook so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I've been driving by it a lot here recently. And every time I drive by it, I'm just like, oof, that kid. And you know he can't enjoy that picture anymore. Like if that's somebody local, every time he drives by, he's like, oh, dear God, what has happened over there? He's so. probably a couple of years older now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got it. Was well, got to be like four or five years older. Right? Look at that billboard, right? Uh, I know. So um, we went to one of their other establishments. Uh, so the Flat Creek also owns. Um, uh, not what's it called? Um, yeah, I'm right there with you because all I can think of is Dana's now, and it's not Dana's. Um, what's the big pancake as big as your head, Amanda? Big as your head pancakes. No. Big, the International House of Big as Your Head Pancakes. <laughs> How about James River? The one right next to James River that uh, w- when they steal your Bluetooth. What is it called? That is, I, can, uh, I think of it. All There's right. one in Brain to do. Bubby and I are both having. And we've eaten breakfast there. Yeah. Had the pancakes. Billy Gales. I got there. Billy Gales. So okay. we went to Billy Gales for lunch. Uh, we are old. Day. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we went to Billy Gales for lunch the other day, and I had already had. Uh, breakfast so i wasn't super hungry but they were going so i was like all right i'll go and it was the first day they were open in branson we were very excited about it so we go over there and i was like i'm gonna get some pancakes but i don't want that big ass giant pancake because they have a pancake that's like 14 16 inches big huge it's like a hub it's like a pizza but uh, uh that's actually they give you a pizza box to take it home in so i was like i'm gonna get some, I'm, i can't eat all that so i'm gonna get the mini stack they got a mini stack of pancakes i'm like perfect i'll get that or the mini stack of pancakes that's what shows up bubby that big ass fucking sixteen inch pancake. That's the mini stack. Is one of what? those. So then, like, is there a maxi stack that's like six of those? You think? And I can't imagine who's eating because you can't eat one of those pancakes. Let alone they have like silver dollar pancakes. They have the little. Do they? Uh huh. I did not see that on the menu. That's what I was looking for. I was just like, I, I want like two or three little pancakes. I'm gonna eat that. I'm kind of full, but I, you know, I'm here, so I gotta eat something, or I'm gonna, you know, crash out before I get to dinner. And then the world's largest pancake shows up. Cut it into quarters, right? You get, you can you. That's how it works. I think is like you're supposed to get it for the table. That's like a table pancake, right? That's not for like just anybody. Share, yeah, exactly. I think last time Kathy and Parker shared that. Yeah, yeah. I like Billy Gales. It's pretty good. It's a, it's one of them places where you get way more food than you ever need. Great. Now I got to go eat dinner there. Thanks. <laughs> so first, Bobby's going to Flat Creek. He's going to eat Flat Creek, and then he's going over to Billy Gales for dessert and pancakes. It's going to be a busy night for you, Bubby. A busy All bu- your fault. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's my fault. Nah, I've been trying to think of somewhere we hadn't been in a long time. Those are good good choices. Those are good choices. You've been to Lambert's recently? No. You but really jack up your go, day. I don't want to go wait for an hour. We, you know, yes. You're, Bubby's correct. So this is, have we talked about Lambert's on here? It is Friday night, no. though. I don't yes, we have. It. Yeah, we. I think we have. Matter of fact, because I'm still trying to catch up. I, I'm on the episode just past Number that. Two. Okay. No. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> no, this is like uh, 14, 15. We talked about it. So Bubby's only halfway through. He's no. you're, you're way behind. Yeah. I'm about 15. What are we talking about on that episode, Bubby? Um, Lambert. Well, well, we, well we Lambert's had, obviously. We talked about Lambert's. We talked about the albinos. Oh, okay. That was Bubby's homework. Speaking of homework, are we going to wait till Tyler gets back to, yeah. to to do our homework assignment? All right. For those of you who are anxiously awaiting our homework assignment, we are going to be pushing that off. They've homework. all forgotten. Okay. I, I put it in the show notes last time because I uh, did recognize that we had not gotten to that part yet. 
Uh-huh. I, I, I put the answer in my phone, uh-huh. but I, I don't remember the question. Okay. That'll be fun for when we get to it. I was like, okay. I don't know so what Bobby's this refers just, to, yeah, but just reading the, I have the answer. I don't, I don't, I'm hopefully when we get to this, somebody will remind me what I'm doing here. Yeah. So that's even better. I'm going to, we're going to start with you when the time comes, Bubby. And, and just you're just going to read is? your answer. Okay. And then see I the want matches. you to backtrack to guess what you think the question is from your answer. Okay. All right. That's what we're going to do. Cause we're not going to remind Bubby between now and then. Uh, but you just told me it was in the notes. Uh, all I said is that we had to do our homework assignment. I did not. I did not put out what that homework assignment. Didn't was. you say it was just in the show notes? Yes, I said we. For, sorry, we forgot our homework assignments. So we're going to get to oh, it. That's next all time. you said. Yeah, that's okay. all I said. So there's no hope. True. There's no yeah. hint for you there. I thought you meant. The and you, there's no way you're going to catch up to that episode between now and then, because you're only on episode 14 now. We're on episode 33. There's no skipping. That's cheating. <laughs> all right. So that's something for everyone to look forward to. Is Bubby's mystery answer and then his guess on the mystery question. Um, I'm going back to this. Amanda, you got any uh, fun nope. things going on in your world? Nope. Just just getting ready to to start the year out there? No. Nope. Not even doing that. Just quietly sitting in her office, twiddling her thumbs, and watching the days go by. That's how I'm living my life. Um, so I have a story from a couple times ago that yeah. I, down. I need to go. Go back to okay. I, I also have a question for everyone, but uh, Bubba, you want to do your story? You want to look talk about my question? Well, let me find, find Let me find it. Okay, Bubba's gonna find his thing. All right, so we've been working on the job site here recently, and I have discovered I have an, uh, an irrational fear. Surprise, I have a lot of irrational fears, things that like I can't do because in my brain I, I'm not allowed to. Um, this one involves porta potties. It turns out I am very uh, uh, concerned about dropping something into a porta potty. Mm. To the fact that I have to empty now my pockets before I can go into one because I am 100% convinced my keys are going to fall in there and then I'm going to have to make a decision, which is there are no good answers to that, to that, to that decision. There's not a, a right decision to make there. When you drop your keys? into a porta potty because you either need to go get them or you need to abandon them. And I can't do either of those things. So, mm. but uh, my question is, do you guys have any like irrational fears or like things that like in your brain, like aren't things, but in your brain are things? No, man's got nothing. <laughs> no. Well, you have anxiety. Ex- 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 yes, I have anxiety. So I suffer from things like that. I know a fair bit of anxiety. I also, here's some, more, here's some more that I'll just throw out there for you. I can't chew gum anymore. Why can't I chew gum? Because I'm convinced that, and I'm not convinced, but my brain is convinced that they're going to pull the, uh, the uh, I have uh, crowns and they're going to pull the crowns off my teeth. And then like that raw tooth underneath is going to be exposed. So I can't chew gum anymore. I also, Amanda knows this one full well, I can't order the same thing somebody else orders at a table. But is that a fear or is that you just being weird? No, it, it was, well, they're all just me being weird. None oh. of them are actual like things. I can chew gum. It's not going to actually pull my crowns off. Like my, I got good dentistry done. It's but like, I know. But like, you, there's a fear of something happening. Right. But I think I'm not sure yet what the consequences is if I ordered something somebody else yeah. has ordered. I don't think it's a fear. I just think it's uh, it's a I just think it's a part tick, of your tism. whatever that yeah, yeah. My tism, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, I can't order the same. So Bubby orders my. I've ex- food. I've experienced that. Yeah. So if Bubby orders my food ahead of me, then I have to pick something else. I, I, I know, and you I, never want to go first. I, I know. I try you... to go first now every time. Yeah. I've learned my lesson there. So now I will like I will jump in the I will, yeah. if I'm sitting like in the middle of the table and they go, Okay, we'll start with you, I will jump the line so that there's no danger of me losing my, my food. That is weird. Because I can order the same thing that you ordered. Yes, you can order the same thing I ordered because that's your problem. You screwed this up, not me. Oh, it doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't bother me if you get it. But if I order the same thing you order, that's where the problem arises. That's weird. I don't know why. It's just weird. Okay, we're just going to gang up on me on this one. <laughs> that is weird. I'm going to just... All right, folks. Well, this was a good podcast. We're just going to go ahead and wrap this one. You chose to Jump talk about board. this. Well, I thought somebody else would join in here with uh, me about something. I like, don't that's have anything like, like that. Like irrational fears or like, 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 t- do you have any like weird ticks that like things you got to do, Bobby? <laughs> no. 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 I'm the only I'm one. I'm just yeah. obsessed like that now. <sighs> I like to have fun, like, while I'm walking on a sidewalk and not step on the cracks. 
but that's just that's but you can me. step on a crack that's though. not yeah that's not me being weird that's just well that is you being weird. that's just but. me thinking uh, i'm gonna try not to step on a crack while i'm walking this is like one time i drove uh where the old airport is in um in uh springfield you know what i'm talking about over there yeah. before they built a new one you, um I learned that you can drive all the way from Springfield to Branson, Missouri without touching your brakes. Because you, your thing flew off. No. Uh, it was overheating. What was it? No, it was because I had somebody drop my car off at the airport uh, and I gave them the key and the fob. Uh, and then I had another key which would work for the door and the ignition. But what I didn't realize was it, that you can't turn off the alarm when you only use the key and not the fob. Ooh. So I started the car up with the, I opened the door with the key, I started the car up with the key, and then the alarm went off. It Just shouldn't have gone off. That's shouldn't weird. have, but also learned that it'll eventually like quit going off, but every time you touch the brake, it will start it back up. Uh. So as long as I didn't touch the brake, the touch alarm the wouldn't brake. go off. Now, the alarm in that car is just the horn honking. Hank, 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 hank. So if you're driving down the highway behind people <laughs> and you're hitting the brake, they just think you're beeping at them. How long does it go off? Uh, it goes off for about, I'd say about a minute, minute and a half. You got to deal with that. Wow. So I drove, once I figured out what was going on, because first I tried to like open up the hood and pull the fuse for the horn, but that was attached to something else, apparently, because it shut down the car when I did that. So I had to put that back together, restart the car, sit through the horn going off again, and then try to drive out of there. Got to the toll booth, had to stop for the toll booth. So the horn goes off again. So I start driving, and then I realize that if I just stop hitting the brake, I'm good. So I got all the way from that airport to my home in Branson without touching the brake again until I pulled into my driveway. If you plan far enough ahead, you could manage that. So interesting. So we have a CPU at work. It's an old gaming uh, CPU, and the computer is used for uh, by the uh, accounting firm that comes in and does our finances every week. And here recently, for some reason, there's an alarm that goes off on the CPU. It'll just start going dee 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 dee, and it'll do it for. A couple of minutes and then it'll stop. But before I figured that out, uh -huh. I was like, oh, it needs to be reset. So I'd go over and push the reset button every uh -huh. time. And, and that would just restart the computer? The last, the last, yeah, it would. And it would go away, you know, within a minute. Okay. And so uh, last time it did that, he was there on the computer using it. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, just hit re. Oh, wait, no, you can't hit reset. You're uh, using the computer. Right. And so it would have just shut down everything he was doing. And he goes, ah, don't worry about it. It'll go away in about two minutes. And sure enough, so that's if a, I had waited, it would have just stopped. That's uh, more than likely a BIOS error on that computer, uh, which means that there's something wrong with that computer. And if you figure out how many beeps it does, then you can look up that code and see what's wrong with that computer. Oh, Good to know. Because this one, uh, this one that we used to record the podcast, I had pulled out of uh, storage. And when I hooked it up, it started, it wouldn't boot and it was just beeping at me. And I looked up the code and it was like, you, your battery's jacked. Uh, so look up bio codes? Yeah, for, but you have to look it up for that manufacturer. Oh, okay. So if it's a Dell, you have to look up the Dell beep codes or whatever. And then it usually will tell you. I will. Or I will motherboard. You can also look up motherboard beep codes. Um, the memory is like f almost completely full i wonder if that may be it may, if, may, may probably not it's usually something like the uh there's a little battery on there this is riveting uh podcasting but for those of you playing along at home there's a little battery on there and sometimes that'll start dying off and that uh keeps like the time when you shut the computer off and does a couple other things um so that'll be dying or sometimes memory isn't seated right there's a bunch of things that can set that thing off okay yeah. Um, but that okay. may mean that you may need to look at getting a new one of those if you're doing all your finance stuff on there. Well, I mean, it doesn't need that much memory. I think we use Adobe also for and another program to print stuff like slides. So it, it doesn't do a lot. So I don't think it... There's no way if that... If we got a new laptop, would probably... I was going to say, there's no way it. in that building you don't have just another computer sitting around somewhere. Uh, no, we have, we have two or three 
but um, they're, I'm not going to say they're in any better shape than right. that one. That's where we're currently at. We had to abandon the new one that we got for here because uh, it turned out it wasn't new. It was broken that I tried to use it for a different purpose. Right. And it turns out it was more broken than I thought it was because it quit recording the podcast on my wife twice and on us once. So that got thrown away, and now I'm just going to look at buying a new one. Yeah. So I'm going to get one of the little tiny ones, one of the little like micro computers, because all we're doing is running this one program on it. So The Macs, the little Macs? Huh? The little Mac? Yeah, no, not a Mac. Oh. I ain't got that kind of money, Bubby. Mac. $6,000 for a little Mac computer. I'm going to spend like $150 and buy myself like a Windows-based like tiny micro okay. computer that all it needs to do is run Audacity and record this damn podcast. That's all, all right. it's got to do. I ain't got Fair a enough. Mac money. We, I ain't rich. What kind of rich do you think I am, Bubby? I got Mac money. <laughs> this is an Android phone. What kind of money do you think I got? Android phone, Mac money. Bubby's rich. That's what I just learned. Bubby's buying Mac. Out of my house. I don't. I don't right, and tell, I'm not Mac anymore. Anyway. Tell your Mac story, Bubby. Which Mac story? So, Bubby. Uh, oh, you, that one? Jeez. Used to work. Can I already tell this? I don't think you did. Bubby used to work uh, at the same place that me and Amanda worked. Uh, we all worked together. Uh, and I left after uh, 18 years there. And then Bubby, uh, the, an opportunity came up that I let Bubby know about. And he, and he took a new job uh, at, at his current place of business. I don't like to mention names just in case we get somebody in trouble. But um, the... V- Go ahead and go ahead and tell me what what happened on your first day at work, Bubby. Uh, first week it wasn't necessarily first day, but first week of work, um, the tech booth needed to be rearranged. Now, why did the tech booth need to be rearranged, Bubby? Because when I first got there, the soundboard was all the way in the left corner of the booth, where it was blocked by um, it blocked the the whole left side of the speakers in the auditorium. So you, you could only hear the right side speakers so from that, where the soundboard was. So that's Bubby's uh, reasoning. And now the real world reasoning is Bubby is the world's best putterer. And if you can putter and do something like rearrange the booth, Bubby is the king of that. So he did a good job. Bubby's going to, Bubby's going to rearrange the booth. So, yes, I unplug, you know, lots, lots of things and move things around. And one of them being the Mac computer that controls the lyrics and videos for the screens out of an auditorium. This, this is an all-in-one. This is yes, a screen, all in one. computer, everything all-in-one. Yes. Very expensive. So I set it on a office chair. That was my first mistake. Not the ground, not the counter, Um, office chair. Office chair. And uh, I have to leave the booth to to go do something. And and I come back, and it has fallen off of the office chair and onto the floor and cracked the face of the the computer. The screen. Screen, yes. And so I got everything plugged back in. Not just a little bit, though, right? No, it it did a pretty good job, but everything still worked. Right. So it it it's just a, the cracked face, and you can still see everything fine. There's nothing wrong other than having a cracked face. This is week one of being week employed. Week one of being employed by this church, yes. So then you have to go and explain this to somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely I tell the music minister right away because he'd been there, you know, a couple of years. Uh, and uh, the one, the chairman of the elders, and of course their reply was, uh, "That's okay when I, uh, well, that's okay when uh, we were working on new projectors. I dropped a laser projector and cracked it Oof. from from the lift. Oh, so that's an impressive move, right there. I did not feel bad because the chairman of the elders had had done that." And so he he didn't want me to feel bad either. So okay, as long as everything still worked, he was fine with it. And Bubby is still employed to that place many and years. They later. had just bought it, you know. Yeah, it was brand new, wasn't not, it? Not, yeah, long before I started. So yeah, so yeah. I, I figured if you I didn't get fired, have, if you didn't get fired for that, you were never going to get fired from that place ever. Yeah, it's over. Been over three years and still have that cracked screen. <laughs> it's just having fun. it's running fine. There's a place in town that would just fix that for you. You know yeah, that, right? Yeah, and it 
well, I would have to get a replacement and load all the programs and everything. You know, it'd be more of a hassle. Psh, too much effort. Psh, tires. Tires. Check them. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> all right. Well, so that that happened. Uh, I broke it a bunch of stuff. I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, the business we work in, you deal with electronics and stuff all the time. I have right. blown up some stuff. I have... I had and this year I've had several people blow up. I had a, a one a one guy work at work plug an amp into an amp. So took the outs of the amp and plugged them into the outs of the other amp, and then um, the smoke came out a whole bunch, and then the, one of those amps didn't didn't amp anymore. Why would you do that? Because you were because the way that it's the way that that whole I have a test rack at work. And the way that that test rack is kind of wired up, um, it has an amp, like an old amp in there, with a, like an old crown amp, but it's a freaking tank. Mm-hmm. And then it's set to come out of there to go to test equipment with, so you can test speakers or whatever with. Mm-hmm. But we also have it so you can come out to XLR and test amps with it as well if you plug the right cable into the right spot. So he took the he plugged the cable into the back of his amp because that's what he wants to, to test. And then he just go ahead and plugged it in the back of the other amp uh, instead of putting the the audio line to it, and yeah, a bunch of smoke came out. It was not happy about that. But the good news is they'll repair that for you for a nominal fee of a couple hundred bucks. So yeah. And then I had uh, the boss's daughter once learned a valuable, a very valuable lesson about the direction of DC voltage Ooh. and that it matters. Yes. It does. It does matter a lot. And she went ahead and reversed those two wires and Oof. smoked out about I don't know a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Nice. And I was like, "Your good thing your dad owns this place because I'd have fired you otherwise." So, um, uh, at the job we used to work together at, I one of the theaters, I actually blew the speakers in. Okay, so I'm going to tell this story because I was there for this. Yeah. Uh, we're getting ready for a festival at this place and um we go in and check in the lobby and it's me and ryan who was on the podcast here just recently and we go and check in bubby everything's doing good we go okay buddy we'll come back here and see you and then we left the building and started walking away and we went out the back door of this particular venue manda and we got to where there's a train track where we were going to cross that train track and then from his building we hear a very loud sound a very loud sound, and then we hear nothing. And we're like, ah, we better go check on that. And we walk in that building, and Bubby has managed to smoke out both sets, of, both of the subs in that building. Uh, like, like gone. But like, not just the subs. Also the mitten uh, tweeters. Oh, did you get the speakers, too? I knew about the subs. Yeah. I didn't know you got the speakers, too. Yeah. Our friend Pat had to replace all of it. Yeah. That was a that was a good one too. That was that was costly. costly. <laughs> that was a little bit on the expensive. That was my bad. Now, it was your bad, but it, I I understand how it happened. Yeah, line level versus mic level, and then moving some stuff around, and yes, then things uh, blew up. That was very much the reason. So uh, be careful out there, kids, when you're hooking up electronics. Be- no, never do that again. Never. Yeah, you know, you learn a lesson. It's a valuable lesson. Never. You're going to learn not to do that a second time when you let. And I knew better. When you let all the smoke out. I once, a um, friend of the podcast, Tim, I once uh, put a screwdriver, like he had a fan in the back of his computer that wasn't spinning, but it was on. And I took a little, one of those little jeweler screwdrivers and I put it on the blade to try to spin the blade. But I w- actually slipped off the blade and hit the power supply that's oh. directly behind that. And uh, that computer stopped working those real quick. Sparks. Yeah, and then there was a big uh, hunk missing out of that screwdriver, and then I had to go buy a new power supply and put it in that computer. I'm surprised it didn't shock you. No, I was on the plastic end of the screwdriver, so I was all right there. I was smart enough not to be touching any metal to that, but I was not smart enough to unplug that computer to do it first. Uh, But yeah, the smoke came out, and I was was very A, surprised, and B, sad. Uh, There was also a young gentleman who used to work at that, uh, company who then came back as a freelancer who hooked up a uh, a power distro and then went to meter the power distro. Have you heard this story before? This is down in the open venue down uh, down in the valley there. Um, uh, maybe. And so he goes to meter that power distro. And when you meet when you're using a voltmeter meter or something, you'll 
you should be on uh, volts and you'll have it set to that to that range of voltage. Well, instead of doing that, he had it set to continuity. So continuity just means that it's going to test whether that there's a circuit there. But basically what it means is power is going to come down one side of that uh, that little probe that you're touching to the power, go through your voltmeter, and then back out the other side. Mm-hmm. And he touched those two pins together with that meter on continuity. And then, um, <laughs> man, it's just hitting things. And then uh, a, loud, a, loud, uh, a loud noise happened, a bright light happened, and then smoke happened. And then there was then there was silence, and we go, "You okay back there, buddy?" He goes, "I'm gonna need a second. <laughs> and then he stood up, and he had those two uh, probes in his hand, but one was significantly shorter than the other one, where it had just melted down that whole probe. Oh. And he's just standing there with it. I went, oh, "You're gonna need a new meter because that one's probably not good anymore." Yeah, but he survived that as well. Toast. So. You gotta be careful around high power. You yeah. can't be messing around with high power. You no. can one ten. You can you know you can take a shock and probably be all right, but that big stuff will get you. Mm-hmm. So, um, all that to say, I am the only apparently the only one here with any un, uh, irrational phobias, and I miss Tyler and I wish he were here to share his irrational phobia with me. Does he have any? He's got to, right? I don't know. Is it? It he can't. Really seem it to. can't just be me. I don't think it's just you, but I think in. You are the one in four in our group. Oh. All right, <laughs> folks, if you're out there, I need your help, okay? I need somebody to write in here with their irrational fears to the podcast and let me know I am not alone in this, okay? It's just not me being... Because if I'm insane and I need to do something about that, I need to know now. What are the weird things that you like have to do, like you can't not do? Those are, those are the big ones, are, are, are those. I mean, there's a lot of like... I got to, like, if I, if I don't know if I've locked the door or not, I got to get up and go check yeah. that and that kind of thing. Although I have a lot of that automated now, so I could just ask the nice Google lady if I did a thing or not, and that works out better. Um, you can't run the dryer when you're not at home. You can't have crock pots going when you're not at home because that'll definitely burn the house down. Um, no, that's what, that's what a crock pot's for. No, it's for burning down your house, Bobby. That's what a crock pot is for. No, it's for cooking a meal while you're gone. No, see, that thing's just cooking away in your house when you're not there to watch, keep an eye on it. And then it's just going to... That's why it's on low. Low <laughs> cook. Slow. I don't, I don't think it's the cooking part that's the problem. It's the electricity part that I have a problem with, I think. But I can't do it. Well, the same 110 is going through it, or 120. So. 110, one, 220, 221, whatever it takes. It's not 220. That's from uh, Mr. Mom. Seems like Tyler would, would be too chill to. You don't think? Have okay, so phobias. where I was at. If you have any phobias or irrational fears and would like to write into the podcast, please write us at allfishingships at gmail dot com and let me know that I am not the only one here. <clears throat> uh, we did get an email this week mm-hmm. um, from. Uh, friend I shared of, it. Yeah, you, she shared in the thing. That was from friend of the podcast, Carol. Oh, that one, yeah. Um, because uh, for those of you who listened to last week's po- podcast, um, Bubby... It was uh, actually this week. But. Well, yeah. this this <laughs> this week's podcast, but by the time this post, it'll be last week's yeah. podcast. Um, you can hear Bubby talk about his roommate from Kakistan. Um, Bubby, you did finally learn where he's actually from. I had to ask my wife. Do you remember where my Russian roommate was from? And she goes, uh, yeah, Ka- Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's not Kazakhstan at all. Kazakhstan. Kazakh- it makes sense. That's where we see from. how you got there, but okay. you definitely went to Kazakhstan. <laughs> um, I couldn't. Think so a friend of the podcast, Carol, said, well, why didn't you guys just Google search Kazakhstan? To which I replied. Didn't think it was a real thing. I replied, I do not want to be on the list that comes up when you search for Kazakhstan. <laughs> But she went ahead and did that for us and sent us, well, I'll suppose this is the Facebook page, her search results uh, for searching um, from uh, Kakistan. Uh, Amanda has also posted it. I lost my glasses for a hot second there. Um, uh, you get such results as, uh, welcome to the Republic of Kakistan. Uh, don't click on that link for sure. Nobody click. On There's anything. also a Flickr account. Flickr is where you keep your photos, Bubby. That just says explore Kakistan's 40 photos on Flickr. I'm gonna pass. Yeah, hard pass on that. Do not definitely don't click that link because you're gonna see some stuff. And then Reddit's gonna jump in on this one. Citizens of Kakistan praying to Allah in the mosque. Uh, this is probably gonna get us some hate mail, but in the mosque of Kak. And then <laughs> things continue after that. But I didn't click on that link either because. Nope. Uh, 
there's also a copy pasta uh, talking about Kakistan as well. So you may not be alone in this world, Bobby. You may have, you know, your roommate might actually have been from Kakistan and not Kazakhstan, depending. So we'd like to thank Carol for that uh, email there. Uh, we did not follow any of those things because we are scared. And I, I, I'm already probably on a lot of internet lists from back in the day. So um, here we are. I got, I got, you, you ever get emails from, I know Amanda's got to have gotten these from like um, your uh, torrent, from your internet provider when you were uh, illegally downloading, let's say movies or music. Or, no, I'm, again, I'm the only one. Holy hell. Yeah. Back in the day, no. like trying to, trying to watch because you know you didn't have HBO, but you want to watch whatever shows on HBO. Or uh, mine was Doctor Who because we couldn't get the Doctor Who episodes back in the day, so I'd have to download them. Um, and then I got a letter from the internet people there, like we're gonna shut your internet off if you keep doing this. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll quit doing it then. I'm trying to get me, and now I'm the only one here too doing that. Bubby, have you ever done anything wrong in your life? What's happening here? The problem I we have here most recently is uh, trying to get videos off of YouTube to to use um, for like church and meetings stuff. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. They don't like you to download no. their videos, Bobby. No, they, they don't. And so there are websites out there that you can, that will help you do that. But they're they, not, a lot of them are not trustworthy. Exactly. Why don't, here goes Amanda. Google will do that for you. Google is like, yeah, let's make a slides like PowerPoint. And you just put that, there's a button that says, would you like to put a you embed a YouTube video? And you say, yep. And you just do it. And Google's like, okay, that's in there now. Now you can just pull that out. Yeah. If you, in PowerPoint? Yeah. So in PowerPoint. It's, no. You have to you use Google PowerPoint. Slides. Oh, it's Google like PowerPoint. Slides. Okay. It's like PowerPoint. You can actually do it in PowerPoint too. You can embed a YouTube video in PowerPoint as well because I've done that. I, okay. All right. I will look into that. We're going to okay. download it. You don't, Google takes ownership of it for you yeah it this is theirs anyway google google's got the youtubes anyway yeah. so yeah it's one of the websites they work together actually i i used quite a bit but then they they keep finding these websites and shutting them down weird that right just mm. use the google, google. Right. Just <laughs> use. it's a family of things that are meant to work together <laughs> all right <laughs> it's an ecosystem bubby <laughs> You need to get you no, get, get right great. with the ecosystem. Okay. Get get away from Apple and their and their shenanigans, and you get right with Google. Yeah, well, Bubby, Cyberpunk future is coming, and you need to pick which corporation you are going to be siding with. Okay, as we know in this house, I have sided with the Google and all and all of her secret listening devices because there are a shit ton of them in my house. Right, I use one Alexa. screwed to the wall right there, I listening use- to this podcast right now and judging us. I use Alexa in my office. I had both at one point. Um, and you and one got bricked. Shit. Drink. <laughs> <sighs> if you got that on your bingo card, go ahead and just drink. I'm pretty telling a story again. Matt is the joy killer. She's the joy killer. I don't know what to tell you, kids. I'm just saving valuable airspace. <laughs> to fill it with. You got Nothing. you got any stories? You got anything good? No. 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 All right. I want to do my two stories. All right. Bubby found his stories. Now, just a quick question. Did you ever remember the one story? No. Okay. No. I'm just hoping one day it comes back and it's going to be a glorious story. All right. What's your first one? Are you saving these candles for? I Okay. <laughs> now we're going to digress real quick here, Bubby. All right. In my basement next to where There's we... There's so many like in, almost burned all the way down. Yeah, in the She's ra- not wrong. In the Radon Dungeon here, uh, where it, which is my basement, uh, we have the podcast studio set up. And then directly behind where Tyler would sit is one, two, three, four, five yeah. shelves and then the floor and then another thing next to it uh, that my wife stores all of her decor for the house. So this is where like the summer stuff... Oh, the decorative. The decorative <laughs> things will go and live. And there are a lot of candles that are three quarters of the way gone. <laughs> I count ten, but uh, some of them are holiday candles, and and I'm gonna imagine they're all holiday scents of some kind. Oh. So you got like um, you got like gingerbread scents over there, or you got like summer scents over there, or whatever. No, I this see. this is a source of contention in our lives. Like, why do we need all this stuff just stored oh. up here on these shelves? But and that's more sense. If you I think it's. I don't think it's a scent. I think it just takes it away. Oh, that's a, st- a, a stink killer. 
Yeah, a small killer. We'll put it by the candles. We'll, we'll see how long it, it takes for them, them to go away. Fight, 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 <laughs> fight. The scent killer and the scent candles are going to fight it out. We'll just like suck the candles down. That's another scent killer right there too, buddy. Okay. Yeah, that's another Is one. Is it smelly? Does the other podcast, does it have a smell? No, she's it? concerned about because the, the cat's. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> the, the cat's litter box is down okay. here. And she's like, very concerned they, that it's going to stink down here. Do something that makes smells? The cats do, yes. Um. One of them especially has a problem. But um, Doesn't baking soda do the same thing? Isn't that why you put it in your fridge? To... Maybe. I don't know how well I, that works. Or is that, just, so. that might just be one of them old wives' tale scams too, Bobby. You know? They're like, oh, yeah, if you open up this baking soda, it'll make not stink in there. But it's just baking soda for people because they, they they can't sell enough baking soda because who needs baking soda? It's got to absorb something. <laughs> it's got to absorb something, says Bobby. <laughs> all right. What's your story? Oh, all right. So a few weeks ago, I was driving along, and Springfield has uh, a couple of highways that surround, make a, a big O um, loop. loop around the city. We got yeah. 65 and 60 and 44. <clears throat> And a lot of these highways have green trails running under them and through them. Yeah, like nature walking trails. Through them. Whatever. Right across <laughs> them. Like there's there's a major highway that the that the joggers and the people with their with their kids just gotta dash across. <laughs> uh and, and so I was driving uh highways the James River freeway actually. So, si- so sixty. Uh and going up highway over James the uh, highway overpasses James at which oddly 65. does not go by James River. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, and uh, Highway 65, so there are some over- flyovers there, right. and there is a green trail that runs underneath. And I was driving along, and I looked to the left. I often do because there's a stream there, and I I like to see if it's full of water or not. And there's a why, there's wait, a, wait. Why do you like? To I just it? do. Okay, he I just, just likes do. to update the website. Yeah, both. <laughs> yeah, he's. You have Bubby, phobias. Bubby, I like to look to got streams a, to make sure they have water. <laughs> Bubby's got an entire website that's just dedicated to the Missouri, <laughs> Southern Missouri, uh, spring rep- spring and uh, creek report. <laughs> anyway, how's so, the how's the one down there in in uh, in, uh, uh f- f- where where's the shooting range at down there? Between Brad's and here. Busick? Busick. How's that Busick. freaking music doing, Bubby? I don't know. Last time I was there, it was full. Okay. And cold. Last update from Bubby. <laughs> full. Uh, um, anyway, so right next to the creek is the, the Greenway Trail. And there, you would think you would see joggers on it. No, I saw the Popo driving down the Greenway Trail. Like just down the nature trail there? Just, yeah, underneath the bridge. Okay. I'm, fly, I'm driving over. And so then I look, okay, where's he going? So I look all the way to my right, and I can see where the trail comes out and goes to the woods. And there's, you know, there are a couple people uh, on down a ways walking. And then there's, uh, it turns and goes closer to the highway that's going south. And there's a group of people just standing there i'm like uh, okay i don't know what that's about but apparently the police are driving on the greenway trail to get to this group now, of people this area that bubby is is now uh rubbernecking everything around him yeah. is a very congested area and uh-huh. very dangerous for driving because many roads meet converge and, and exit from this one section right so bubby has at this point thrown all caution to the wind and and is just seeing where this cop is going and what he's about to do. Well, yeah. By the time I get to this point, I'm on the flyover. Right. So I mean, it's not, I'm I'm past all the uh, exits and entrance to the to the flyover. Okay. I'm on the flyover. All right. High so, on this bridge. Yeah. So, um, I was, yeah. So I, he's just driving up there. You don't have no idea what he's I, doing I, up there. I mean, I'm, I can't just stop and watch. No, sure you but can. I, I know that there. He was on the way to the group of people. I just don't know what was going on, and it, it was just weird that I saw him driving on this greenway trail because you never see anything but bicycles on it. What do you think's going down on the nature trail? That's a good question. Let's debate but, this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. Is like, is there like a homeless encampment up there they're mad about or? Could could be because Springfield police aren't really interested in in like crime fighting or anything. They're more like crime lookers. I I, I think I, I might have said this before. You mean like breaking up homeless camps? Yeah. Well, they like to just come and see where crimes happening. They like or has happened. They're like, oh, look at that. Your car got stolen. Hmm, that's a shame. Enforcing that you can't use gaming machines in convenience stores. Yeah, Bubby's mad about this one. 
Bubby's been in, they, they're taking out his slot machines out of the out of the out of the gas station, so he can't go play slots during his lunch break anymore. I I've never, never, no. I've you ever not. been gambling, I've, Bubby? I have never. What? Well, I've played Texas Hold'em and won quite a bit, but but that's like with friends. Yes. You have not been to a casino though. Uh, that's more of taking advantage of them being drunk. Yeah, yeah, no, that's how that works. Yeah, sober people always win. That's how that works. True. Um, have you? So you've never been to like a casino? You never been? Have you never been to Vegas? No. no. So I'm excited about uh, going on a uh, cruise ship in oh, yeah. June, and so I'm going. I'm going to go to the slots. Uh, which which cruise li- slot machines? Which which cruise line are you going on? Royal Caribbean. Okay. So yeah, they'll have that. They got some coin pushers on there. If you like the coin pushers, those are those yeah. are those are steal. They're going to steal your money. But then again, so are the slot machines. I've done that, but that's... You, should, you need to sign up for the, the for the slot machine tournament, Bubby. They're going to have a tournament. See, now I think you're making things up. Nope. I am not making this up, all right? So let me tell you what a slot machine tournament is, because you've never been, so I'm going to tell you. And for those of you who don't know, here's, here's how this works. You're going to sign up for this tournament, okay? It's going to cost like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. And then you're going to get assigned a position in the tournament, okay? And then when your turn comes, you're going to sit down on the slot machine. It's going to be in special play mode. It's in slot play mode. So it has unlimited credits, all the credits in the world, but you have a time limit and you have to score as many points as you can, as many like winning combinations and points as you can in that time limit. Everyone else is doing the exact same thing. So what this involves is they've got the spin button, right? And you're just going to hit that spin button as fast as you can. And then sometimes there'll be a bonus up there that you have to click. Like they'll be like, oh, you got this. Click here to get this bonus. And so you're just pushing the button as fast as you can. Blah, 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 blah. And then look at the screen. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. Boom. Hit the bonus. Boom. Hit the bonus. And everyone's going to be doing the exact same thing. And they're going to do like five rounds of this. And then at the end of your round, they're going to give you the top three people. And those three people are going to move on. And everybody else can go the hell home. And they're going to do that until there's one winner. And that dude's going to get like six grand or eight grand or whatever it is. So he's going to win a bunch of money. And you have to have no talent at all. You just have to be lucky because everyone's going like this. And then depending on how the machine spins the wheels and, and hits the things, you could have a bajillion points or you're going to have four points. And there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. I did this on the last time we were on the cruise ship. And I was like, this is dumb as hell. Like there's, there's, no, there's no skill in this. I'm just going to keep hitting this button and hope I win. And I did $20 for 6,000. Yeah. Bad. I mean, they, I mean, somebody's going to win that money. Like of those people playing, somebody's taking that money home. So might as well be, it's probably the be- better odds in, in that casino is playing the stupid slot tournament because somebody's going to win. But, How about you, Amanda, you played. Have I played? Yeah. Casino. You've been to yeah, casino? I've played casino. <laughs> have you, Wait, Amanda, have you no, played at a casino? Have you ever played casino, Amanda? <laughs> not, not the game, not the movie. All right, what's your what's your game of choice, Amanda? I don't really have one. So when you go, to the... I'm, it's super not interesting to me. No, you know you're not a gambler. No, no, I have a game of choice. Yeah, it's Pi Gal. Yeah. So Pi Gal is the easiest game to play. One of the easiest games to play, and it also has the best odds. You also will not win very much money by playing this dumb game. And the only casinos that have it are like the old casinos, like in the seedy sections of town. It's like if you go to Vegas, you got to go down to the strip, down to, to uh, what you call it, street. Uh, down Fremont? Fremont Street. And then there'll be some casinos down there that have Pi Gal. But the nice thing about it is like no one is real serious about Pi Gal. So the lady who's dealing Pi Gal will like help you out and say like, no, no, you need to play these cards. And that's like how, that's like the best way. And they have like the rules up there. Well, so it's you can a card game. Of, yeah, it's a card game. And basically, they deal cards, and you got to try to make the best two card hands. Uh, so you got to make two hands, and if you both your hands beat both their hands, you win. If you one of their hands is better and one of your hands is better, then nobody wins. And if both your hands suck and both their hands are good, then they win. And mostly, it's one of your hands is good and one of their hands is good, and nobody wins. That's m- mostly how that game goes. But you can you can put like fifty dollars down and play like two hours. You can kill a lot of time with Pi Gal. My wife likes roulette, and she wants to play roulette. Her whole family are, are, like to go to the casinos. I don't go because I never win. Well, I go because they go, but I don't want to go because I never win. So I've learned that Pi Gow is the way to go because I can spend a lot of time screwing around and not lose a lot of money. And sometimes I come out ahead by like $5, but not often. So I'm going to give it a try. Yep. Looks like fun. I think my favorite game is to sit 
find somebody at the bar at the casino and just ask them about their day. I and see. they'll tell you a nice story. Do, I like to collect the stories. I see. Amanda's just... Sometimes you get a jackpot. You get a real good one. <laughs> sometimes. I had a Too dude, much information sometimes. I had a dude that I don't know in any way whatsoever come up to me the other day and just start spilling his life story at me for no... I, I showed no interest in this experience, but he proceeded to spend like 20 minutes telling me his entire life story. Sometimes people just got to get it out. <laughs> but what... Do I look like the... like? Apparently to that guy you did. Apparently to that guy I did. So, but Bobby, yes. So some rules for you, Bobby. You need to set a limit, okay? Right. Don't just go in there willy-nilly say, and say, this is the limit of money that I am planning on losing. Don't say... How much would you suggest? Uh, for your first time at the casino, going to, the, to play slots. For you, that's probably what you're going to do. Probably. You're going to look for the cheaper slot machine. So you want to find... Any... A, Penny slot. I doubt they're going to have that cruise ship, but they'll have a quarter one probably. Quarter. Or maybe a little cheaper. But remember, that's per line. So on the casino, on the on the slot machine, it's going to be per line that you play you're going to pay. Um, so you could be, it could be like a, a five cent machine, but then when you play all the lines, it's like a buck fifty. So you got to be careful of that because they're tricky. Them casino people, they want your money. They don't want you to keep that money. They want that money. So uh, you're going to play that slow. Find ones you like. Find one that you think is fun. That looks pretty. Looks pretty. It's got a lot. You know, they got like an Adam's Family one. You can play that one. Or I know there's a Golden Girls one. There's a Glitter Kitty one. Glitter Kitty. That looks pretty. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Don't don't play like an old boring seven. I've heard Will of Fortune. They have a Will of Fortune. Yep. You can play that one. But don't play like a boring one that's like diamonds and and like bars. That's boring. You want to... And... You might get lucky. So you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, you're losing, you lose. And then sometimes you'll hit like a combination of things and then that machine goes ape shit. Yeah. And it'll just start spinning on its own. And it'll be like, ba-bomb, ba bomb and noises are going off and, and things are going. Pop I win, in. I win. And then, yeah, you'll get some money back. It's not going to be nearly as much as you put in there, but you'll get some money back for that. But it's fun because that thing goes ape shit. Yeah. And it's just you doing just all watch the- it do its own thing. Yeah, you're like, oh, the crowd. So we went to, um, this is probably a retell of this story, but whatever. We went to the one in St. Louis. And we had been there all day, and I we had eaten dinner there at the buffet, and then we were gambling. <clears throat> and I had like 50, I started out with 50 bucks. Is that the one on the boat? That's one on the boat, yeah. Okay. So I would had like 50 bucks when I started, and we had played, and we played, and I was done. I was out of money. I had like three spins left. And I hit that like second to last spin, boom, and that machine went off, Bobby. It went crazy. And it's just spinning. I got 500 free spins. It's just going. And you're not touching anything. It's just happening. Me and my man, me and my man. Things are lighting up and lights are flashing and bonuses are happening. And when it's all said and done, it got back to $50. And it's like, you got a $50 pair. I was like, cash it, some bitch out. And I took my money down. I got my $50. I was like, even. I win. And I got the hell out of there. That's funny. So that 100% happened. Yeah, you had your entertainment for no money for no money that's exactly what i figured like i didn't win anything but i didn't lose anything so i'm doing pretty good and i got the hell out of there right so i cashed out and i and i was the big winner uh but you see people like there and they hit like a ten thousand dollar jackpot or whatever it is but i've never i want to be that guy i've been up like 20 bucks i think is the best i've ever done and then i just give it all back to the machine anyway so you never said how much 100 bucks I'd say 50. between 50 and 100. That's You, okay. you got to say to That's yourself. That's a decision you got to make on your own. Yeah, you got to say, how much am I willing to lose here? Because you're going to lose every bit of it. You just have to accept in your brain that that money is gone the second you walk in that door. But it's for entertainment. It is for entertainment. Exactly. So My you got to say time. 50 bucks or 100 bucks. I wouldn't go any more than that for your first go out. But like I said, find that cheap machine. You're not trying. You're not playing any mind games with the casino. You're not trying to like, like play in a system. You're just going in there for fun. Yeah. So. And if you and if you're you know if you got a hundred dollar limit and you're like fifty dollars in you're like yeah I'm kind of did all this I think I'm just g- get your money and go don't don't stick around and like play that the rest of that money don't get addicted to it no don't get addicted to it now there's people who will tell you like on the cruise ships there's like a strategy here where if I spend X amount of money at the casino then they will give me like f- another like cruise then you get like a two day cruise or three day cruise or something. As like a as a loyalty bonus, you always got to sign up for the loyalty. I'm gonna say it sounds like you got to pay or play a lot of money. Well, there's a there's a 
system and I've watched videos on it, but I'm never going to get into it because I don't cruise that much. You know, we go at once every couple of years. This is for people who like cruise a bunch, but that you can end up like end up paying for your cruise, at least the, the cruise part of your cruises because they still get you on the internet and the drinks and the, of course. the rest of that stuff. So, um, just be aware of that. All right. You got one more story and then we'll get out of here. Yes. So this is just recently, a, a couple of days ago, I was, um, um, driving home from work and I was stopped at an intersection. It was busy five o'clock traffic. So traffic going the other direction at the intersection is all backed up, just stopped. And there's this dude on a skateboard and he just is going right in between the middle of the cars, two lane, two lane, uh, cars going same direction and he's just scooting right in between them so kind of like all the, the way down the yeah. motorcycle guys do kind of like that and then i saw him uh weave uh cross in front of one vehicle into the median and just keep on skating uphill uh, downhill or flat it was flat okay it was sunshine and um uh glenstone that's not that's not safe I, that's that's how you get smooshed. That's a busy, busy intersection. That's a busy intersection, and like no one is expecting skateboarder at any point. Like no. they say, watch for the motorcycles, right? No, but right. there's no signs. I've out seen to a say, lot of that too. Watch out for skateboarders, like go, weaving in between cars or nothing. No, no Springfield is not like it's not designed to be friendly to that kind of experience anyway. Like New York city, you know, you see bike messengers and people on rollerblades and stuff kind of weaving in and out of traffic. It's kind of expected there. They'll not, run you over here. Not right here. Them dudes will just like burp two points. Yeah. And, and just moosh you good. I get nervous when I see the motorcycles come and doing that. We had one dude uh, this week, this past week that like me and Tyler were driving and uh, there's a car like right in front of us to the right. And that dude comes whipping in between that car and us. And there was hardly enough room to get that whole motorcycle through that. He just burp right through there. He goes mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, that's how you get killed. 100%. That's how you get killed. Yeah. There was just an accident the other night on South Campbell, a car pulled in front of a motorcycle. And Springfield doesn't have very, the, the drivers in this town are not, not good. No, nah. there's a lot of terrible drivers. It's crazy. In this town. So be careful out there, kids. That's, and the roads are right now, every time it like, slightly snows or ices in this town, the roads just disintegrate in like all of our roads are made of paper mache. As far as I can tell, there are a lot of potholes. So they like, as soon as we get any snow whatsoever, the entire road system, just there's one going up 60 towards uh Kabul and stuff. As as you're going up the hill across the James river there, there is a probably two foot wide and deep pothole right on the edge of that lane where I know some people have just wrecked a tire going through that thing Mm -hmm. and they're not going to get out there and fix it anytime soon. Tie rod. Right. Just, just snap your, snap your freaking front axle in half when you hit that thing. Mm -hmm. Shocks. Yep. Shocks. It's a whole bunch of badness going on there. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap this one up. We managed to wander our way through this episode. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, please, uh, check us out on the website. It's all fish and ships.com or Carol, 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 Carol puppies. Just got to get everybody drunk. Um, if you'd like to write in and, and tell me about your un uh, unrealistic phobias or fears, uh, please do. Cause I'd love to hear them. Cause I'm feeling a little on the outs right now being the only one who's insane. So if you've got any insanity, you send it my way. Cause I'd love to hear about it. Uh, that's at it's all fish and ships at gmail.com. You can check out our Facebook group. Um, join that, and uh, we post the pictures and what have you on that. Uh, so you can check us all out there. Uh, we also have YouTube. It's all fish and ships at YouTube, and the episodes are getting uploaded there now automatically. So that's fun. Uh, Instagram and TikTok, we have them. We don't use them much. I'm sorry for that. Um, so if that's it for that's it for me, and my name is Thor, Bubby, Amanda. Uh, remember folks, no matter what you got going on in your life, it's all fish and chips. <laughs>